What's up guys, David Moss Jr. here. And listen, I wanted to make a video. I have quite a few videos on cold plunging and I wanted to make like the video to help anybody step by step, piece by piece, part by part, build their own cold plunge, build their own ice bath, build it their own DIY. You don't have to be super technical. You don't have to be uh, smart when it comes to building things. I wanted to make this as simple as possible. There's a few parts you're gonna need. So let's get right to it. I wanted to make the one video you'll need, you'll need to follow if you wanna build your own DIY cold plunge. So let's get to it. And a quick thank you to our sponsor, Natural Living Health Supplements, nattylife.com. Use discount code MOSS, M-A-U-S, to save 25% on all my favorite supplements. Enjoy. All right, so first things first, you're gonna to wanna to find something to put water in. This is a prime time. I just cleaned out the water. We actually just put some pavers down resod of the yard so this is a perfect time i had to clear this whole thing out i cleaned the whole thing out super easy to clean this is the ice barrel this is one of my favorite plunges what i like about it is that you get to sit into it instead of lay but i believe there's a world for both but for this video i'm going to be using the ice barrel the ice barrel i really like it because to me it's more ergonomically comfortable this particular ice barrel holds 105 gallons of water, super easy to drain. I set up my DIY system in this thing by drilling a few holes in the side so I can put the lid on and I'm gonna show you how that works right there. There's a lot of different systems and setups you can do, but for my DIY setup, this worked out super easy, keeps the water cold and clean 24 seven. But you can really use anything you want that can hold comfortably about 100 gallons of water. A lot of people use horse troughs, uh, galvanized buckets, Rubbermaid bins, whatever, bathtubs, whatever. But the first thing you're gonna want is something that you can fill up with water. Also, if you use my link in the description below, it's gonna save you some money, so you might wanna do that. All right, so second to whatever you're gonna fill up with water, the most important piece to this puzzle is gonna be keeping that water cold. So I chose this chiller. This is the Active Aqua Half Horsepower Chiller. I use the Active Aqua. It's the hydroponic water cooling system chiller. I went with the half horsepower system. It has a power boost. It can handle, you know, the three quarter inch tubing that I have that I've kind of upgraded myself to. It's rated for 90 to 172 gallons, meaning it chills the water in my 105 gallon ice barrel with ease, keeping the water super cold at all times. For my research, like when I first went down the DIY cold plunge rabbit hole, the most expensive cold plunges on the market use the exact same chiller or something identical to this. So to me, it was kind of a no brainer. Um, you know, I went on Amazon, I found this exact chiller, I ordered it, it was awesome. And everyone I know, including myself, who went with this chiller has had zero issues with it, being outside, exposed to the elements. I live in Florida. I know it says it shouldn't be outside, but it's been outside and I've had no issues with it. So uh, that's been my story and I'm sticking to it. So one of the questions I get is electricity. This thing pulls 510 watts, so like 5.4 amps, plugs right into a regular household outlet. And uh, yeah, I live here in Florida and it's been working super good. I have mine running 24 seven outside since the middle of June and it's working like a champ. Link to this chiller is also gonna be in the description below. The third, probably most important piece, most expensive piece is gonna be your pump. This is the Hydro Farm 11 gallon per hour pump that I chose. I got it on Amazon and I went with this one. It's a submersible water pump. It was recommended on Amazon with my chiller, so that kind of made it easy. It's rated for 100 plus gallons, pumping 1,100 gallons of water per hour. It's quiet, plugs right into the wall, just like the chiller. Yes, it's probably a little dangerous to some degree. I do have the pump on every single time I get in the water. It sucks the water in. There's a little bit of a filter built into it. Uh, yeah, and I keep it on all the time. I've been doing it three to five times a week since June. I've had no issues or scares. I know a lot of people comment and ask me about that, and there are other pumps you can go with. This is what I've been using and I've had no issues. So hopefully the Lord willing, everything's okay. But uh, hey, I guess there's always a little danger to getting in water with electricity, but the fish do it. I guess I'm gonna keep doing it until something bad happens, but hopefully it doesn't happen. So this is the pump I went with. Link to that is also gonna be in the description below. So the next thing you're gonna want is tubing. In my original DIY, I went with a half inch tubing, realizing that didn't pump the water as fast as I really needed or as much volume as I really needed. So I upgraded to the three quarter inch tubing. Cool thing about this chiller is it comes with a lot of different fittings. This is how the fittings look and work. You're gonna want some hose clamps that fit your three quarter inch tubing, just like this, to keep the hose attached. So this is the uh, return tube, just for reference. 
but you're gonna wanna get yourself some tubing. You don't need too much of it, but it depends on your setup and how far away you want your chiller from your tub, your bathtub, your ice barrel, or whatever it is that you're gonna be using. And as far as the tubing goes, this is a Hydro Farm black three quarter inch tubing. Got it on Amazon. The tubing or pipe that you use just needs to be rated for water. So I went with, once again, the one that was recommended with the products I got on Amazon. It was rated for my chiller and my pump. So that kind of just made it super easy. Just make sure you get the right size. That's always gonna be important. Look for three quarter inch or whatever size you're gonna go with. Like I said, I originally went with the half inch, found that the slow, the flow was a little slow. So I upgraded to the three quarter inch and everything's been much more efficient. The chiller and the pump came with multiple fittings. So it worked with both. You won't need much, uh, just 25 feet is what I got. I got plenty left over if I need to change anything around. And guess what? The link's gonna be in the description below. All right, so this is the strainer I went with. I'm gonna put the link to this one in the description. You might find better strainers out there but this is the three quarter inch strainer. It's a water strainer, super simple to install. You just kind of make sure the arrow is pointing which way the water is flowing towards the chiller. I saw a friend of mine make the mistake of putting this on backwards. So make sure that's on correctly. This one was a female to female, meaning I had to buy two male adapters, which you can't really see, to connect it to the hose. It all makes sense when you get the pieces on a table, but this is the, uh, this is the strainer that I went with. I got two three quarter inch male adapters plugged right into the tubes using a clamp, holding it all together, keeping debris out of the plumbing. There's definitely other filters and a lot of the bigger companies have better filters that actually keep the water super clean, super filtered, and that's always great. This is super minimalistic. It's gonna keep debris out of your chiller, but if you want like an ozonator or like a big pool filter, that's another level. That's not what this, this video here is about. And then the last thing you're gonna need are these hose clamps. Just make sure they're the size to fit whatever tubing you decide to go with. You'll need, I ordered a 20 pack. They were like four bucks. Link to the ones I got will be in the description below. So if you watched any of my other videos, um, you'll notice that I did have a UV filter that I thought I needed, so I plugged it in. It didn't really do too much. Um, I noticed that if I use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, and put a, like a cap full in every week. It's not gonna, like my water stayed super clean and I also hose off if I'm sweaty or if it's been a long day at work and I, I rinse the gel out of my hair and stuff like that before I get into my plunge. But if you use hydrogen peroxide, it should keep your water pretty clean. You don't really need chlorine and a bunch of chemicals. I know a lot of people promote that stuff. I, I try to live like a biohacking lifestyle. So I try not to use chlorine or any other chemicals. Hydrogen peroxide works just, just as well and it works very good. But there's a lot of filters you can try if you feel like you absolutely need them. I just don't feel like I need them anymore with this setup anyway. All right, so one of the reasons that I really do like the ice barrel over some of my other experiments, I, I first started out with a galvanized horse trough and uh, I didn't have a lid. I didn't have any way to keep stuff out of it. And if you watched any of my videos, I had talked about my son throwing his toys and snacks into my ice barrel. I'm sorry, not my ice barrel, my, uh, my galvanized trough. And I built a lid, I did like a DIY build and it was just terrible. It didn't seem to work out and I couldn't find anything on the market that would work at the time. But Ice Barrel sent me this Ice Barrel. They saw my video, sent me this to do an honest review on. I converted it to my DIY. I absolutely love it. My family uses it. The only thing is like, I'm at like 40 degrees and below now and they won't get in the water unless it's over 50. So we're kind of at like that crossroads where I might need another cold plunge or another setup like that. But back to the reason why I really like the Ice Barrel. It has a lid seals this thing nice and tight. I had the same water in here for almost three months. I didn't realize it was that long, almost three months and it was still crystal clear. I just drained it because we did this little project here. So I'm gonna fill this thing back up with water. It's 45 degrees outside right now. It's cold here in Florida tonight, but I'm gonna fill it up with water, put the chiller on. It'll probably cool off very fast, but uh, tomorrow's Sunday, it's my day off of work. so. I like to do a very long plunge on my day off on my Sundays. It's my active recovery day. So I'm gonna get this thing set up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really appreciate the support. I didn't know that cold plunging and ice baths were gonna become as popular, become as big of a thing as they are. But the love and the support, the likes and the comments you guys post, it really kind of fuels my fire because I'm passionate about helping people. So uh, I appreciate the support. If you consider subscribing, that's pretty cool too. I'm gonna post a few more videos. I got some more stuff coming that's already in the works. I'm super stoked on. So keep it locked in here. Subscribe, like, I don't know, do all the YouTube stuff. 
But it, the most important thing is just have fun and have fun, enjoy what you're doing, have a great night, have a great day, and God bless. There's one more little piece to this puzzle that it's my first time trying it, and that's one of these little hose filters. I have a whole house filter on my hose, but I don't know. Everyone was recommending using one of these, so I'm gonna use it and we're gonna fill it up using this. And uh, just maybe I'll put the link to this down there too. So check out the description. If you wanna build yourself a DIY cold plunge using a bathtub, a trash can or whatever, just get yourself a chiller, a pump, a tube or a long tube, some clamps, a filter maybe, fill up some water, turn that baby on and get cold. <laughs> so I know I said the video is over, but there's a few more things that I just started thinking about mistakes that I made that I wanna make sure you don't make the same mistakes. So after you clean your water out for the very first time with this setup and you spray off your ho your filters and you clean all your filters out and you're all excited, I'm gonna show you what I learned and hopefully it'll help you out too. Check so this is the first time I've used a water filter to really filter the water. So this water going in there is like drinkable, super clean water, which is great. And as soon as the water, see how the water is like almost above the pump? You can go ahead and turn it on, but you see this is where the water comes back out. And the first time I did it, I, I just turned it back on like this. And I don't know, there's always buildup and stuff that seems to find its way out as soon as you turn something back on for the first time. So I'm gonna pull this hose out before I turn it on and let the first, like, I don't know, 10 seconds of water just be gone. So we turned everything back on, let some of the water come out. And I'm just gonna throw it back in, we're good. We're good. And there's the system, that's how it runs. Water goes in the pump, through the filter, through the chiller, and back in. It's a circle of water life. And there you have it, now the video is over, so like it, send it to a friend who wants to do a DIY cold plunge. Send me any of your questions and comments below. Subscribe and have a great day. God bless.